a second I I need to get my story straight My friends are in the bathroom Getting higher than the Empire State My lover, she is waiting for me Just across the bar My seat's been taken by some sunglasses Asking about a scar And I know I gave it to you months ago I know you're trying to forget But between the drinks and subtle things closes and you feel like falling down I'll carry you home tonight bar closes and you feel like falling down i'll carry you home tonight i always knew this day would come we'd be standing one by one with a future in our hands so many dreams so many
Those are the stories that I can't explain. I leave my heart open, but it stays right here empty for days. She told me in the morning she don't feel the same about us in her bones. It seems to me that when I die, these words will be written on my stone. And I'll be gone, gone tonight The ground beneath my feet is open wide The way that I've been holding on too tight With nothing in between The story of my life, I take her home I drive all night to keep her warm in time It's Friday right here in its cage I know that in the morning now see a single light upon the pier although I am broken my heart is untamed still and I'll be gone gone tonight fire beneath my feet is burning bright the way that I've been holding Baby, running after you is like chasing the clouds. The story of my life, I take her home. I drive all night to keep her warm and then time is frozen. The story of my life, I give her hope. I spend her Till she's broken
Please be seated. Well, good morning. I'm Paula Stephan, Director of Student Life. And on behalf of the administration, faculty, and the class of 2023, it is my pleasure to welcome you. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 58th commencement exercises of Bishop Kearney High School. Today is a very special day as we celebrate the achievements of our graduating students. I'm honored to introduce our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Keith Miller. Mr. Miller is Bishop Kearney's Director of Safety, Security, and Building Operations, who diligently and successfully navigated our school community through those COVID years. He is this graduating class number one fan. Please welcome to the podium, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Good morning, thank you very much. Before we begin, we'd like to thank Innovative Field for the opportunity to conduct our ceremony here. My name is Keith Miller, as an administrator, I have a bunch of administrators behind me that I would like to introduce. First, Bishop Carney, Board Chair, Class of 1988, Mr. Tony Soprano. <laughs> Bishop Carney's CEO, Mr. Tom O'Neill. <laughs> President of Bishop Carney High School, Mr. Steve Saluzzo. Our wonderful principal, Mrs. Mary Martell. Our director of student life, Mrs. Paula Steffen. Athletic director and assistant principal, Mr. Steven Strauss. Our dean of students, Mr. Franco Walls. And Bishop Carney, member of the Board of Trustees and graduate of the class of 1990, as well as today's commencement speaker, Mrs. Michelle Kane. Now to start our celebration with the blessing of our graduates, please welcome our principal, Mrs. Martell. Good morning. My name is Mary Martell, and I'm the principal of Bishop Kearney High School. Three years ago, I came to BK from Holy Cross School to be the religion teacher for the ninth and 10th graders. I was a little scared and maybe a little discouraged, but ready for the new path that God had set before me. Being welcomed by my former Holy Cross students, David, Marguerite, Jekka, Sarah, who I taught in preschool, gave me strength and courage and helped me to not be afraid. I had the honor of teaching 40 of the graduating seniors that year. During the first year, we forged our way through Lexio Divinus. We used Play-Doh. We made hot chocolate. We watched Evan Almighty and Field of Dreams. We had Bible verse competitions with Sam as the always visiting judge, and Jekka and Drew did test corrections to turn their 98 into 100. Zach Wise slept, but always had the correct answer. David made everyone laugh, and Jet tried to tell me that coach said they could leave early from every class. But most of all, we studied the Old Testament. This was one of our favorite readings that year, a reading from the book of Joshua. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. 
I will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The word of the Lord. Please join me in extending your hands over the graduate for the blessing. Lord, you said to Joshua, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. May our Bishop Carney graduates know that you will also be with them and you will never leave or forsake them. May they be strong and courageous and be careful to obey all that you command. And may our graduates not turn from you to the right or to the left so that they may be successful wherever they go. May our seniors not let his word and law depart from their lips or hearts. May they meditate on it day and night so that they may be careful to do everything written in it. And then may they be prosperous and successful. May our graduates always know that you have commanded that they be strong and courageous. May they never be terrified. May they not be discouraged. For you, God, will be with them wherever they go. Seniors, go be great. Be a king and be a blessing to all you meet and in all you do. Be strong and courageous and never forget that the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And know that your BK family will always be here to support you now that you are alumni. Please help me welcome graduates Dexter Kickline and Naomi Tink for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the National Anthem, performed by Katie Claire Dobbins, class of 2025, and Madeline Scahill, class of 2025. Please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, bless our lives from this day on with goodness and success to use our gifts wisely and in service to others and to do all things well. Empower us to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love, guided by your light, so that we may use our talents to, in the words of St. Ignatius Loyola, go forth and set the world on fire. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed Edmund Rice, pray, live Jesus in our hearts.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you both. You may be seated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please stand again for our national anthem. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the Now it's time to sit down. I, my apologies. Thank you, girls, very much. Very beautiful. And the Lord has blessed us with sunshine and wind. Our next speaker is the son of Bishop Carney alumni, Mark and Kath, and their younger brother, BK alums, TJ and sister, Emily. During his time at Bishop Carney, he celebrated many accomplishments such as receiving the presidential scholarship his freshman year and being selected as a captain of the varsity soccer team his junior and senior years and leading his team to a much deserved Class B sectional championship. He also participated in seven, several school musicals with roles including Jesus in Godspell, Gaston in Beauty and the Beast, and Robbie Hart in The Wedding Singer. He served as House O'Day's chaplain, lieutenant, and prefect. This year, he was selected as a core member for the retreat team as the rector for the sophomore retreat and the Kairos retreat as well. He was the vice president of the National Honor Society. He took two, 10, not two, 10 AP classes over three years, all while earning a grade point average of 100.66 with 28 straight quarters of high honor roll. He'll be attending SUNY Potsdam in the fall to major in biochemistry and minor in computer science, as well as continue his athletics playing collegiate level soccer. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce the salutatorian of the class of 2023, Luke Teitler. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm extremely competitive, and I proudly stand before you as the first loser. <laughs> 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 
But sometimes, losing is the best thing that can happen to you. It forces you to reflect on what went wrong and what you can do better to improve for the future. All of our futures are yet to be written, and it's up to our losses to help write them. However, you cannot write your futures alone. It takes the dedication and teamwork of many people, many of which are here with us today. Classmates, teachers, faculty, friends, family. Thank you all for being here supporting our graduate. The teachers, faculty, and staff have worked extremely hard to get us to this point and put countless hours into our education to ensure our success. Thank you to my teachers for welcoming me, welcoming me into their classrooms with an optimistic smile every day and treating me more than just a number. Thank you to the extended faculty and staff for keeping the school running from behind the scenes and providing and maintaining a safe learning environment for all. Thank you to my friends for pushing me to be my absolute best self challenging me in the classroom, on the, on the stage, and on the field. Thank you to my brother and my sister for setting the expectations of me so high and always being one call away. Most importantly, thank you to my mom and my dad and everyone's parental figures. It's from your outpouring of support and steady safety net that myself and all the graduates before you were able to pursue what we wanted without the fear of falling endlessly. None of us sitting before you would be here today without each and every one of you and your endless sacrifices that oftentimes go unnoticed. From a young age, my father told me to take pride in my work, to be proud of my work and the name at the top of the page. I can confidently say that I did just that for my seven years at Bishop Kearney. And I encourage all of you to do the same in your future. Be proud of yourself and what you stand for. I recently had the opportunity to watch my brother graduate from college. Congrats, TJ. And his commencement speaker, Dr. Michael Hayduck, share with everyone his definition of the three Ps of success. Passion, purpose, perseverance. Whatever you choose to do, have a burning passion towards it. Be passionate. Whatever you choose to do, have a purpose behind it, whether it be something somewhere or someone be purposeful and lastly whatever you choose to do you will have to persevere adversity is inevitable mr strauss made that very clear on the soccer field be persistent you will fail there's no way around it there's a reason star wars is my favorite movie franchise yoda found the balance between success and failure and it's there where the force truly lies the greatest teacher of failure is, Luke, we are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. In order to be a master at life, you first must conquer failure. And Bishop Carney has exposed us to this idea of failure in all of his classes. In English, we learn that if you don't fail, you're not trying hard enough. In science, we learn that you're going to have to fail in order to prove yourself correct. In social studies, we learn that when you fail, you come back even stronger. And in math, we learn that you're going to fail a lot of tests. <laughs> and yet somehow, we're all still graduating. Graduates, your younger self was looking up at you, smiling, proud of all the setbacks you overcome, proud of how much you've grown, and proud of how, uh, proud of how much opportunity lies before you. I remember walking into Bishop Kearney on September 9th, 2016, seven years ago, my first full day of sixth grade at an unknown school that I had no idea would become such a large part of me. It was the first time I ever used a locker, and I'm sure that everyone there remembers me crying over the fact that I could never remember a combination and never knew which way to turn the thing. But there was one kid, two lockers over, who dropped everything in his hands to help me. And that kid was Joey Chirassi. Little did I know that that stranger would become my best friend. For those of you who had not, haven't had the opportunity to be around Joey, I'm sorry. Because you're truly missing out on one of the best people I know. He can make you smile in the darkest of times. He can make you laugh until it hurts. He can put his body on the line for his team. 
He can lend a hand whenever anyone needs it. He can and he will stop at nothing to ensure that all his friends, brothers, and family are okay before he even thinks about himself. He's the kind of person that I aspire to be like, and I encourage all you graduates to do the same. But most importantly, Joey's a mirror, a mirror of his father. And that mirror is so clean. Mr. Chirassi was one of the most selfless, loving, and remarkable people I've ever known. There wasn't one moment I saw Joe, and he wasn't optimistic. He cherished every moment with his family and created a transformative bond with every person he interacted with. That is the kind of person that I hope all of you drive to become like. I am truly blessed to have known him and believe he and his three sons fully embody what it truly means to be a Bishop Carney King. If you take anything away from this, be like Joey and his father, be a beacon of light for everyone else, and leave your legacy, just like Mr. Chirazi did. That legacy will live on forever. I have no doubt in my mind that Joey and all of us graduates of the class of 2023 will create our own legacies. Legacies that include passion, purpose, and perseverance. Legacies that include adversity, losses, and failure. Legacies that include pride, growth, and light. Legacies from Mr. Chirassi. What will your legacy be? As my favorite teacher taught me in B127, Fac omnia bene. My legacy will be to do all things well. Thank you. Outstanding job, Luke. Thank you. The National Honor Society elevates a school's commitment to the values of scholarship, service, leadership, and character. These four pillars have been associated with membership in this organization since its inception in 1921. NHS chapters and students are in the schools that care not only about the student achievement, but also community engagement. NHS students and their peers volunteer to make their communities at the highest rates and make connections with and serving the community a priority. Please welcome this year's National Honor Society President, Drew Atanasi. That is the first year as a seven-year senior that Mr. Miller has got my last name correct, so round of applause. <laughs> Hello, family, friends, teachers, students, and the elitist graduating Bishop Carney class. My name is Drew Atanasi, and I'm pleased to be the class of 2023's NHS president. The day has finally come, the bell has rung, attendance is in, and we are no longer BK students, but BK alumni. This class has worked harder and more diligently than any other I have seen. This being our fully non-mass, non-distance, and in-person year of school. We are the COVID babies, the hybrids, the preschool wellness checkers. This senior class has gone through ups and certainly downs, but at the end of the day, we are a community, a community built on laughter and togetherness, a class that looks forward to watching Mr. Burke lighting things on fire or hearing Mr. Barker rant on the economic state of the world every morning for eight months straight. <laughs> Our class could look a lot different, but by no coincidence, we have persevered through every hardship, every step back, and every failure. This is a class full of people with incredible dexterity. Somehow, we all mesh together perfectly. All almost 60 students are able to com communicate and ability to accept one another. I don't know about you, but this moment is incredibly bittersweet. In this moment in time, it is one of the first times we as young adults are able to write our own scripts. No one is telling what time we have to be at school, what specific classes we must take, and of course, no one telling us to take off our hoodies or that our shoes are out of dress code. This is our time to become and learn who we are as, as individuals. 
And I know most of us at Kearney have been a part of my identity for a large portion of my adult life. I learned who I was as a person because of Kearney. I met the people who I consider my family at Kearney. We've won championships, sectional titles, performed shows, concerts, and participated in highly competitive chess tournaments. We are each other's brothers and sisters. There's times where we fight and we ice each other out, but at the end of the day, or in our case, end of semester, we know we love each other at all costs, and that's what matters. I love my Bishop Carney family. If I could give any underclassman any advice, it would be not to wish your time away. Trust me, I'm the biggest culprit of the anti-Peter Pan syndrome, but I assure you that one day, you'll miss sitting through ELT and begging your teacher for snacks, or asking to go outside the minute the weather hits 50 degrees. Now on to the sappy part. I'm truly proud of each and every one of my fellow graduates. I was honored to get to know most of you during my seven years at Bishop Carney. And there's some I haven't spoken to more than 10 words to, but I am proud nonetheless. We took the one year of normalcy and handed it with grace. Effort was something this class was very familiar with. This is a class full of the future. Future physicians, engineers, teachers, nurses, professional athletes, and life's future ambassadors. I fully believe that everyone in this class has the potential to succeed in anything we are determined to enter. Seniors, if I have learned nothing about us, it is that we don't give up. So thank you for allowing me to stand here and be your personal cheerleaders. Thanks, Drew. Good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Saluzzo, and I'm the president at Bishop Kearney High School. I'd like to once again welcome each and every one of you to our 58 commencement exercises. Before I get started, I want to just recognize and uh, acknowledge a couple of things that Luke said. He did an outstanding job of thanking people. And that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit here for, for the next couple of minutes. Um, I'd like to start by recognizing our board of trustees and thanking them for their continued leadership and guidance to ensure that our school and our students continue to stay true to the mission of Bishop Kearney, even with the ever-changing times. I'd also like to thank Mr. Tom Golisano for his continued support and commitment to Bishop Kearney over the years. He has provided so many, including our graduates today, with the opportunity of a Bishop Kearney education. I'd also like to recognize and thank our wonderful faculty and staff members. I fully appreciate the work that each of you do every day to continue to provide a sound platform for educating our students. You do this each and every day, and for that, I say thank you very much. Lastly, I'd like to thank our students who are graduating today. Your journey certainly has not been easy, but you've persevered through all the adversity to get to this point today. I'm confident that your experience at Bishop Kearney has provided you with a wonderful baseline for each of you to have success in your future. You're a special group of young men and women, for sure. You didn't get here alone, however. Many people made many sacrifices to allow you to get to this point today. So please be sure to share today's moment with each and every one of them, and never forget what you learned as a Bishop Kearney student. Also know that you can always come home to Bishop Kearney. From a personal standpoint, I'm incredibly proud to have our graduating ceremonies in this stadium. You see, I spent the early part of my career here in this ballpark, and I was lucky enough to be part of the front office that moved the stadium from 500 Norton Street to 1 Maury Silver Way. Although the stadium opened more than a quarter of a century ago, it seems like it was just yesterday. This place continues to be a very special place for me. It's home for me. And my hope for each of you is that Bishop Kearney will always remain a home for you. So in closing, I bestow upon each and every one of you an Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you, May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you, and once again, congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Tom O'Neill, and I get the pleasure to introduce this year's commencement speaker. 
With over 25 years of experience in the accounting industry, and she is the first female partner in the accounting firm of Mengel, Metzger & Barr here in downtown Rochester. She's been a long, outstanding member of the Board of Trustees at Bishop Kearney. She also serves on the Executive Committee of the Board of Trustees and is the Chair of the Finance and Audit Committee. Her professionalism and guidance for our school has been nothing short of essential in allowing our organization to aspire to new heights. Her dedication, tireless work, ethic, calm demeanor makes her an invaluable resource to our school. She currently lives in Webster, New York, with her husband Tom, of 28 years, and has two children. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michelle Kane. Thank you, Tom. Good morning. Congratulations, class of 2023. Congratulations to the parents, family, and friends who have supported and encouraged these students over the last 18 years. Thank you to the faculty and staff administration for supporting these students throughout the last several years, very possibly the best years of their lives. And thank you to President Saluzzo, Principal Martel, and Mr. Urzetta for giving me the honor of speaking today. So just a reminder, I'm Michelle Kane, class of 1990. My bio's in the program. Tom just told you a little bit about me, but in a nutshell, I'm an accountant. I'm a partner and owner of a public accounting firm specializing in audits of nonprofit organizations. I'm very involved at Bishop Kearney as a trustee and officer of the board since 2010. So the theme for today, life is full of decisions and choices. Some will be good, some not so good, but all opportunities for learning, growing, and paving your path towards success. Luke, great minds think alike. We kind of have the same theme here going in our speech. Um, we're going to play a little game real quick, and we have to make this quick or I'm going to get in trouble. Um, everybody knows the game rock, paper, scissors, right? OK. If you don't, you have to make a choice. Rock, paper, or scissors, OK? How does the game work? How do you win? Rock crushes scissors. Scissors cuts paper, and paper covers rock, OK? Best out of three. It's pretty random, but best out of three, we're going to do this real quick. I'm going to say rock, paper, scissors, go. On go, you make a choice. So quick, pick a partner, real quick, right next to you. Here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Rock, paper, scissors, go. All right, where are my winners? Winners, all right, great. My non-winners. Luke, nobody's a loser here, okay? My non-winners, better luck next time. Maybe you can learn something from your choice. Okay, fun fact strategy, next time you play rock, paper, scissors. First choice, pick scissors. Why? Most people think that your opponent's going to pick rock. Rock's the easiest. Rock, paper, scissors, go. It's like you're already there, right? So you pick, so you pick scissors because most people actually pick paper. They think their opponent's picking rock. So they pick paper. Paper covers rock. You pick scissors, you win. You cut the paper. OK, so that's first choice. Strategy for second round. Pick what your opponent picked. OK, so in this example, you pick scissors, your opponent picked paper. Second round, you pick paper. Why? Your opponent will most often pick what would have beat you in the first round. So you pick scissors, 
They pick rock to crush your scissors. You pick paper, you cover the rock. You won. Two out of three, you're done. Okay, let me know if that strategy works. Never tried it before. Um, you can't play it that way with anyone in this facility right now because they all heard the same thing. But bottom line, you had to make a choice, good or bad. Maybe you learned something from that choice, but either way, you must move forward. Obviously, some decisions have a much greater impact on your lives than winning rock, paper, scissors. But don't be afraid of failure. Failure is not the opposite of success. I'm going to say that again. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. We have to fail to continue to learn and grow and ultimately succeed. So as you've been preparing for graduation, you've been making a lot of decisions and choices. Pretty stressful, I'm sure. Are you going to go to college, trade school? Are you going to go in the workforce? Are you going to go in the military? If you chose college, which college? Will I like it there? What will I major in? Will that be the right fit for me? Whatever you decide, you will be met with challenges along the way. It will feel chaotic at first, but you'll learn from your experiences and you'll find your way back on your path towards success. Try not to get discouraged when you struggle. I personally believe that everything happens for a reason. Even though you may not understand it at the time, take a deep breath, have faith, and jump back in and move forward. I thought I would share some of my personal experiences to give some examples that are fairly relevant to your current situation. I'm going to start with my kids. So my kids are a little bit older than you. My daughter's 25, my son's 21. My daughter Miranda, who's 25, when she was in high school, she thought she wanted to be an architect. She took math, she took CAD classes to prepare herself for that. She was looking at colleges for architecture. She decided to enter a program to learn more of what it's like to be an architect, and she realized that wasn't for her. So she changed her path, and she started looking at schools that offered pharmacy. She graduated last year with her doctorate in pharmacy. She's finishing up a residency program right now at Ohio State. But a few months ago, she had to make another decision. Did she want to apply for a second residency, or did she want to go into the workforce? She decided to apply for second residency. She didn't get matched. She didn't get in. She was devastated. In her mind, failure. It wasn't failure. Life was just directing her in a different way. She ended up going into the workforce, and just um, last week, I think, she signed a job offer to be a clinical pharmacist, doing exactly what she wants to do, where she wants to do it. So life just led her down a little bit of a different path. My son Jay, he thought he wanted to be a nurse, so he looked at colleges with nursing programs. He chose University at Buffalo. They have a great nursing program. He spent his first two years of college taking science courses. Applied for nursing school, didn't get in. Devastated. Failure in his mind. He had to make a choice. Did he want to apply to a nursing program somewhere else, or did he want to stay at UB and choose di something different? He chose to stay at UB. He graduated a business major with a focus in marketing. He had to catch up on his business courses, so it took him some summers and winter breaks to catch up. But he graduated a couple weeks ago with his degree, and just yesterday signed an offer for a job in his field. So again, what he thought was failure led him in a different direction. If you find yourself in situations like this, know that you're not alone. Life changes course often, but it doesn't mean you made a poor decision or failed. It just means your decisions are leading you down a different path than originally planned. So one of my challenges in college, I chose accounting as my major, and part of that degree included a public speaking class. As you can see, not one of my strengths. 
I was terrified to speak in front of people. Before my first speech in class, I broke out in hives. I was so nervous. Well, I chose not to give up. I wanted to graduate with my degree, pass the class, but it really was a good learning experience. I guess you can say maybe I've improved a little. I did not break out in hives this morning. I've learned a couple public speaking tips along the way. Keep it short, I'm trying to. And fortunately for me, as is the case with most commencement speeches, no one's listening anyways. Oh, I got some laughs, a couple of people are listening, okay. If anyone is listening right now, it's probably the parents. So I'm going to speak to you for just a moment. I'm in a phase of my life right now where both of my children have graduated from college and are going off into the workforce for the first time. For me, this feels like the first time where they are truly adults and will be on their own. I'm guessing you never stop parenting and certainly will never stop worrying about your children, but it's time to give them some independence. Let them make mistakes so they can learn and grow. You have done your job getting them to this point. You have instilled the proper values and now you have to let them make their decisions and deal with the consequences. You can certainly guide them and support them, but it's time to allow them to make their own choices, even though it may be very hard to give up control and watch them struggle. Easier said than done, I certainly know. So in addition to my full-time job, I'm the treasurer of the board of trustees at Bishop Kearney. My fellow board members and I, many of whom are here today, make many choices and decisions to benefit the fine students here at BK. Many decisions on academics, athletics, residence life, safety, everything in between. We try our best to make the right decisions for the entire BK family, but we have learned a lot along the way, and we are so happy for each of you as we watch you all move along to your next journey in life. So to recap, life is full of decisions and choices. We all make decisions. We all will face challenges along the way. Learn from your mistakes, grow into success. Bishop Carney's motto, Fac Omnia Bene, Latin for do all things well. You should certainly strive to do all things well, just know it's okay to make mistakes along the way. Whatever decisions you have made for yourself for post-graduation, best wishes to you all. We know you will do great things. We are all very proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Michelle. The daughter of Tim and Sarah, our valedictorian, came to Bishop Kearney her junior year. During her time at Bishop Kearney, she has especially enjoyed studying chemistry, physics, and English literature. Outside of the classroom, she is passionate about piano, which she has played since the age of five. She performs as a soloist and a member of the ensemble in the Rochester community. She also enjoyed leading and attending class retreats, as well as being treasurer of NHS. She has earned a GPA of 100.96, and she'll be attending Syracuse University in the fall. She'll be studying chemistry on a pre-med track. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce the valedictorian of the class of 2023, Margaret McGrath Bauman. President Saluzzo, Principal Martell, CEO O'Neill, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty and staff, family and friends, and my fellow members of the class of 2023. Good morning. My dad is a Kearney alum, class of 86. My aunt and uncle are alums too. 
But I didn't grow up thinking of Kearney as our family's school. I followed in the path of my sister in sixth grade and went elsewhere. I found five years later that I was looking for something different, somewhere closer to home where I could feel at home. I found that at Bishop Kearney. There is no medium temperature at BK. It is either steaming hot or freezing. The teachers care about hoodies and sneakers more than I ever imagined possible. And the construction never stops. But despite all of this, or maybe partly because of it, I have found a home at BK. From Miss O'Brien's jokes about her kids and fun math lessons, to Mr. Burke setting things on fire during chemistry, Bishop Kearney is one special place. The people here today make Kearney what it is. And so, like people, BK has its virtues and things it can work on, but most of all, it has the right values. Family, faith, learning, and community. Most of our focus these past few months has been on our next steps, on the blueprints for our life. What are our plans for the future? College, the trades, the workforce? We've all heard these questions time and time again, and we have our answers for the moment. But I would like to take a little time to address a different question. My favorite poet, Mary Oliver, asks at the end of one of her poems, Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Our lives won't be simple or orderly, even if we have them planned out. We are not in control, but they definitely will be precious. We only live once, one wild and precious life. Mary Oliver has some suggestions, and I have a few thoughts too. She says, first, Pay attention. Second, be astonished. Third, tell about it. First, pay attention. Whether it be in relationships or with causes you care about, be aware of the world around us. Friends need our loyalty. Family needs our support. And others we don't even know need us as allies in a time of so much inequality. Pay attention to the people and the things around you. The first orange of autumn, the unexpected kindness of strangers, or even sudden, subtle signs that your friend is struggling. Attention is a form of love. It makes life more beautiful. Second, be astonished. For me, I hope to always be astonished by injustice, by inequality, not accepting things as they are, and challenging the systems at work. This kind of thought put into action is what makes change in our world. But also, be astonished by goodness and grace, by the miracle that we are here, that we love, that we experience loss, and yet somehow make it through. It's astonishing that life is beautiful and that we have so much to be grateful for. I'm a person who is amazed by the little things in life. I'm amazed that I've become good friends with people I never connected with before. I'm surprised that while I've only known my classmates for two short years, it feels as though we have gone through life together. I'm astonished that after 18 years, I still love the little things with my mom. A text out of the blue, a trip to the mall, a chat after a long day. They bring me comfort, and more simply, they make me happy. Third, tell about it. This one we will all have to figure out over the years. Some of us will tell about it through our chosen professions. Some of us through art or sports. Or maybe even how we raise our own kids someday. I think Joey's dad, Joe Triassi, told about life through how he raised his three sons with such dedication, 
purpose, and humor. He put love into each day and told about life through how he treated others. He encouraged people to take risks and accepted that people make mistakes. He was faithful, determined, loving, generous, fun, and perhaps most uniquely, you were in his family if you were in his presence. I am forever grateful for him and his family. I will carry his example with me as I leave home. Pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. Living a meaningful life does not mean accomplishing big things or getting high in paying positions or certainly not rising to the top of the job market. Living a meaningful life is caring about one another and seeing the good in people, in places, in things. Living a meaningful life is finding the blessings in everyday life and realizing that we may seem small in the grand scheme of things, but our lives are precious. I wish you all safe travels. May your lives be meaningful and generous. I wish you lots of luck and laughter, and may you always be surrounded by family and love. Thank you. Excellent job. Uh, Mr. Soprano, I believe it might be time for some re-fireproofing of the building since our, that's the second mention of our pyromanic, I mean, chemistry teacher, Mr. Burke, setting fire. So, Mr. Spran, we might need to re-fireproof the building. And if you haven't seen Mr. Burke set fire to stuff, it is actually pretty neat. Every year, awards of distinction in various academic areas are bestowed on Bishop Carney students. It is a great pleasure to present these special awards to the following students. The valedictorian of class of 2023, Margaret McGrath Bauman. The salutatorian of the class of 2023, Luke Teitler. <laughs> the Founders Award is the most prestigious award given to a Bishop Carney student. It is presented to graduates who during their four years of high school have exemplified to the highest degree the ideals and spirit of Bishop Kearney High School. This year's award winners are Luke Teitler and Joseph Triassi. The Scholar Athlete Award is an award presented to the students who have combined athletic ability and academic excellence. This year is presented to four students, Trevor Bonhan, Cadence Hadley, Ava McNaughton, and Nick Shaw. The James E. Carney Service Recognition Award is an award presented to a student who have completed over 100 hours of service during their four years in high school. This year's award winner is Jacob Lay. The 
the Blessed Teresa Gerhardinger Award for service is the award presented to the student who dedicated themselves to our school and our community during their last four years in high school. And they have completed over 200 hours of service. This year's award winner is Il Isabella Pelosi. For the distinction in the area of mathematics is presented to Drew Antonese. <laughs> For the distinction in the area of music is presented to Joaquin Ortiz and Alice Scott. For the distinction in the area of theater, Drew Antonese. For the distinction in the study of religion, Joshua Harris. The Brother Charles Crane Award for the distinction in science, Ava McNaughton. For the distinction in the area of social studies, Isabella Vassar. For the distinction in the study of Spanish, Camora Jones. The Monroe County Executive Community Service Award, Joseph Rika and Emily Opet. The Campus Ministry Leadership Award is an award presented to students who have dedicated themselves to building and implementing our school retreat program. Their unmatched leadership and social skills, paired with their determination and passion, have allowed all BK students to grow closer to God and to each other. This year's award goes to Taylor Banks and Samuel Furioso. The Sister M. Francis Borgia Award for Distinction in Business, Nikki Sharp. For the distinction in the study of Latin, Marguerite Kasinge. The Brother Paul M. Hannon Award for the Distinction in Media Arts is presented to Jack LaFerrier. The Brother John Stewart Award for Distinction in English, Margaret McGrath Bauman. The New York State Education Department Scholarship for Ac Academic Excellence. This year's winners, Margaret McGrath Bauman, Luke Teitler, and Ava McNaughton.
Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for our award winners. Our next two speakers have been an integral part of the Bishop Kearney community. They served as prefect and lieutenant of House Avonmore. One found his home in BK Soccer Goal and the other on the chessboard. Please welcome, respectively, to the podium for this year's student reflection, Sammy Furioso and Zachary Wise. Today I stand before you to reflect upon a journey through middle school, a chapter in our lives that has shaped us into the young individuals we are today. It feels like just yesterday we embarked on an exciting yet challenging adventure, and now here we are on the verge of stepping into new horizons. Middle school, a unique phase of our education where we transition from the innocence of childhood to the cusp of adolescence. It was a time of exploration, growth, and self-discovery. We embarked on a path that was filled with new subjects, new teachers, and new friendships. We faced countless tests, both in the classroom and in life. We emerged stronger, wiser, and more resilient. This remarkable journey would not have been possible without the unwavering support and guidance of our incredible teachers. They believed in us when we doubted ourselves, nurtured our minds and hearts with knowledge, encouragement, and compassion. To our teachers, we owe a great debt of gratitude for pushing us beyond our limits, for instilling us the love for learning, and preparing us for challenges that lie ahead. Let us not forget the remarkable friendships that we forged during these middle school years. These friendships became the pillars of support, laughter, and camaraderie that carried us through both triumphs and tribulations. We celebrated victories together, shared secrets, and lent a helping hand when needed. These connections built on a foundation of trust, understanding will undoubtedly endure as cherished moments long after we leave these hallways behind. Middle school was not without its share of hurdles and obstacles. We faced moments of uncertainty, fear of failure, and the pressure to fit in. But it was these challenges that we discovered our inner strength, resilience, and the power of perseverance. We learned that failure is not defeat, but an opportunity to grow and improve. We learn the importance of embracing our uniqueness, celebrating our differences, and finding the courage to be true to ourselves. As we prepare to fit very well to this chapter of our lives, we must carry forward the lessons we've learned. We must remember that success is not solely by, measured by grades or, or accomplishments, but by the values we embody and the positive impact we, must, we make on those around us. Let us continue to strive for excellence, not for ourselves, but for the betterment of our communities and the world at large. Although we may be leaving these familiar hallways behind, we must not forget the values and principles that were instilled in us during our time here. Let us remain curious, embrace lifelong learning, and never lose sight of our dreams. Let us continue to be compassionate and empathetic towards others, understanding that the world needs more kindness and understanding. To my fellow graduates, I urge you to embark on this chapter of our lives with confidence, courage, and the unwavering belief in ourselves. Let us face the unknown with open minds and open hearts, ready to embrace the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. Thank you. Hello, my name is Zach Wise and I attended Bishop Kearney for four years. Originally, BK was a backup for me. I wanted to go to McQuaid, but after middle school, I ended up coming here. Making, oh, excuse me. Little did I know at the time, it was going to be the best thing that had ever happened to me. Making the jump from a tiny middle school with less than 150 kids across three grades to a big high school, I was nervous. On top of that, freshman year I took public speaking with Mrs. Steppen. For a little guy coming from a small middle school, it was incredibly daunting. But I remember one of the first friends I had made at BK was in that class, and he was a senior named Miles. He played basketball, and almost immediately when he got set next to freshman Zach, he decided to befriend him. I would give him fist bumps in the hallways, and I thought it was cool that this really tall varsity basketball player was my friend. 
It was also in that same class that there was a partner project and I had no one to work with. Neither did Sam. He waved me over to his table and there began one of the best and greatest friendships I have ever had. Time passed and I met basically every person there was at BK. I was in stage crew for some time. I played the saxophone for about three months, met some incredible people. Sophomore year, I was even welcomed onto the soccer team in the middle of a season because Sam convinced me to play. Even though I had never been in the same room as a soccer ball ever in my life, they were all happy to have me on the team. I even got a nickname from Mr. Strauss. It was Chaz, C-H-A-Z. When he came up with it, he said it was Zach backwards. Not entirely, but close enough. <laughs> By junior year, I'd really found my groove in classes. And I want to thank every teacher at BK for making it such an enjoyable experience to learn and grow. And here we are at the end of senior year. I feel like this year, excuse me, I feel like this year has gone by much too fast. And that may be in part due to my love of sleeping in various learning environments, but it did feel like it happened in the blink of an eye. These days leading up to graduation, I've been reflecting on my time at BK a lot. And one thing that stuck out to me is how much I wanted to be here graduating. I wanted to be done with school. I would sit in class, watching the clock, itching to leave. But I'm realizing now that it is the last time I may see a lot of the people here today. What seems so far away is here now. The next thing I know, I'll be at my next graduation, hopefully. And I'll be thinking the same exact thing. It all went by so fast. The most important lesson I have taken from BK is to value the time you are spending with those you love. I feel like today people spend too much time stressing and worrying about the future when all they need is right in front of them. Nothing is guaranteed in life. Andy Bernard from The Office said, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Unfortunately, there isn't, but there's beauty in that. Nothing in life is permanent. Appreciate what you have when you have it right there and then, because before you know it, it'll be gone. I want to thank every teacher that taught me and all of the people you see graduating today. I want to thank all of you, my classmates. I want to thank all the parents who gave so much for us to attend this amazing school. And I want to thank BK for giving us the necessary skills and knowledge to face any challenge that might come our way, for making me and my classmates the people we are today, and for giving us endless memories and friendships that we will cherish and enjoy for the rest of our lives. A lot of you may be nervous or even scared for what the future holds, but rest assured that you got this. Whether you know it or not, BK has set every one of you up for success in ways you cannot imagine. And I have no doubt that we will all go on to do great things with our lives. Thank you. Well done, gentlemen. Next, performing the song, The Blessing, written by Chris Brown, Cody Carnes, Carrie Jobin, and Stephen Futtrek, is the Bishop Carney Ensemble. Singers and graduates, Luke Teitler, Drew Antonese, and the entire class of 2023, accompanied by graduate Chance Antonor on guitar, graduate Joaquin Ortiz on drums, graduate Alice Scott on clarinet, and our new BK chorus and band leader, Mr. John Sheffer on piano. Graduates, if you could stand when you sing, ladies and gentlemen, the Bishop Carney Ensemble.
Now is all the time that you've been waiting for. President Saluzzo, Principal Martel, and the rest of the Bishop Kearney community. It is now my honor to present to you these students who have successfully completed the diploma requirements of both New York State and Bishop Kearney High School and are therefore candidates for graduation. First up, Chance V. Antonor. Go ahead, Susan. Presenting our next diploma is teacher Susan Dobbins to Drew Antonese. Presenting our next diploma is teacher Vernon Banks to his daughter, Taylor G. Banks. <laughs> Michael R. Barkowski. Margaret McGrath Bauman. Trevor Berg. Trevor Bonhan. Presenting our next diploma is our long-term substitute teacher, Daniel Bordeaux, to her son, Zachary J. Bordeaux. <laughs> Kennedy A. Boston. Jacob Carroll. <laughs> Peyton P. Compton. Liz Marie Cruz. Sarah Dabat. Grant D. Denuccio. Morgan M. Faluca. Jack Richard Fialkoff. Samuel M. Furioso. Brendan G. Gilmore. Liam M. Gordon. Cadence J. Hadley. Brennan G. Hancock. Joshua A. Harris.
John Clay Humphreys II. Kamora N. Jones. Molly G. Jordan. Marguerite Kasinge. Dexter S. Kickline. Owen P. King. Kiera M. Kraft. Isabel R. S. Kraus. Kelvin Crone. Jack W. Leferrier. Jacob Lay. Sophia Maji Pizzonia. Corson G. D. McGuire. Zachary T. McGrath. Ava M. McNaughton. Kate E. Minert. Theodore David Merrill. Emily Opet. Joaquin A. Ortiz. Jet Otwell. Isabella Angelique Pelosi. Katie C. Phelan. Jack Milne Plandowski. Joshua V. Player. Joseph L. Rica. Olivia G. Rubenstein. Alice D. Scott. Nikki Sharp. Nicholas J. Shaw. Jacob W. A. Simmons. Garrett W. Simpson. Adam J. Stevenson. Naomi S. Tink. Joseph D. Triassi. Luke Teitler.
Hugging takes a long time. <laughs> Presenting our next diploma is school counselor Caitlin Daniels to Isabella Vassar. David Whitfield. Morgan Williams. He's last in the line of the alphabet, but number one in our hearts, Zachary T. Wise. All right, graduates, please stand. Now please move your tassels as an indication that you now have graduated from Bishop Carney High School. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Bishop Carney class of 2023. Okay, please remain standing as the Bishop Carney alma mater is led by class of 2025's Katie Claire Dobbins and Madeline Scahill. I want to thank you all for coming today. Please join your graduate in the concourse near the main gate after the recessional. Due to the festivities of this afternoon in this facility, we have about 20 minutes and then you can go outside the park. Thank you all and God bless each and every one of you. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa.